Welcome. My name is Steve Soloway, and I'm joined this week by... Glenn Jordan. Glenn, we've got Beach to Beacon, the TD Beach to Beacon. Um, why is this race as important as we think it is? I was going to say seem to think, but why is it important? Well, uh, this is the race founded by Joan Benoit Samuelson. This is uh, Maine's most famous athlete. Um, running, perhaps running's most famous marathon or famous distance runner. And, and she's really, she didn't just spring onto the scene and, and win the first women's Ameri uh, Olympic marathon, but she's continued to run and she still runs and she's 56 now. And last week in Iowa, she won her 12th consecutive master's title in the Big Seven Miler, which nobody mm -hmm. outside of running knows about, but she continues to inspire people. and in world-class athletes too are drawn to our little part of the world to run in this race because of her. To me, Glenn, it's really three races. It is the race for elite runners. It is a race for those runners that we know here in Maine, the Sherry Piers. It is a race filled with our neighbors, people that we know I'm struck by, I remember one year I was talking just to, you know, someone that might have finished 2000th and 2001st. It was a father and a son. Days before they were shingling or re-roofing their house in 90 degree weather. And now on a Saturday morning, they're running Beach to Beacon. Or a few, more recently, there were three nurses from a hospital in New Hampshire. Got off their shift, drove to Cape Elizabeth, changed, ran the race. That is the spirit of the race to me. We gotta do the ooh and ah over the elite runners, and hopefully there's a couple of Americans that will be up in the lead this time. And let me ask you, for the success of this race to continue, does there need to be an American presence among the leaders? I don't think so. I mean, I th think, there's a story for everybody, a reason for everybody to run this race. And, and the fact that there's the main title, top main woman, top main man um, within the race, I, I think that's, there's always going to be, I mean, if you're a main, you're, you're an American, I suppose. Um, so there's, there's that, those sub races in there. An American might one day win. The American has never won the overall title of men or women. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Meb Kaflesky and Ryan Hall this year and Dina Castor, and so there's a chance, but I still wouldn't, wouldn't bet against any of the East Africans, the Kenyans or the Ethiopians. No, you never can. No. Um, this is uh, a sport that Americans used to be very competitive in. I happened to talk to Ryan Hall for a piece that I'll be doing. Ryan says there's been a rebirth of American running. Hopefully we'll see that. Veering off, Alex Rodriguez very much in the news. Is he running in the Beach to Beacon this year? I hear he's got he some free should. time. He yes, should. Well, Just kind of blend in, in with shape. the crowd. All right. Are we piling on a little bit too much as, as a uh, nation of baseball fans? Piling on. So is he, uh, well, it's, it's, it's interesting. If he had been in his prime, it, it seems like the Yankees just want to get rid of his payroll and, and get under the luxury tax and, or, reduce that anyway, and, and he's, he's seeming to go the way of Barry Bonds, where people just kind of got sick of him. He was, if you're that good already, and then you're cheating as well, or you're taking PEDs, that just seems wrong. Yes. There, there's one difference. Barry Bonds was respected, I don't know if he was loved, but certainly respected and admired by the fans of the San Francisco Giants for whom he played and whose uniform he wore when he broke Hank Aaron's record. A-Rod, Yankee fans. Yankee fans, are they? They've had it. They've had it? Well, they liked they've him for it. a long time, didn't they? They no? did. No. Okay. That's it for this week. Thanks very much for joining us.